Hello Internet, my name is Patrick and this is Fringeworthy, a show where I talk to you about weird magic decks. Except today, I'm not going to be the one talking to you about a weird magic deck. Instead, me from the past has a great interview with someone showing off their favorite legacy deck. So, take it away, me from the past. I'm here with... Jake Yakia. Yeah, and we're here at PAX and I saw his super sweet Soldier Legacy brew and I wanted to talk to him about it. So, tell me about what you're playing here. Uh, I'm playing what I like to call Legacy Soldiers here. Mm -hmm. I love Mono White, I love Soldiers, and this is definitely my love letter to Magic here. Mm -hmm. It's a um, combination between like a prison shell and Soldier Tribal cards. Nice. Get some um, really nice boosts from both of the Thalias. Ooh, there we go. In Magic that are both, you know, they're both oppressive prison creatures and Soldiers at the same time, so that kind of... Uh, gives the deck some legitimate punch. Okay, so yeah, you're starting out with uh, four of each of the Thalias, and you've got some preeminent captains and Bally Rush Bannerets in here, too? Yeah, now these cards might actually be the best cards in the deck here. Uh, Bally Rush Banneret is... It seems kind of harmless at first, but it's just as insidious as a Birds of Paradise. Like, this thing just lets the deck start going off. You know, you're casting Thalias for one... Uh, and then later on, you get into this guy right here, Daru Warchief, who also makes soldiers cost one less, mm -hmm. and they start chaining into each other, and now you're casting, you know, at all soldiers cost two less, three less, and you're playing everything for one mana, two mana. Mm -hmm. Things really get out of control, too, when you add uh, Enlistment Officer, which is very similar to a card a lot of people know, Goblin Recruiter. Mm -hmm. Only difference is soldiers instead of goblins. Now, you can imagine when you say one mana, look at the top four cards, cast all the soldiers. If there's another enlistment officer, do it again. Mm -hmm. You can drop three, four, five soldiers in one turn. Um, yeah, and you curve out all the way at Captain of the Watch as no, well. Yeah, this is, this is really the spiciest part of the deck. There's nothing like killing people in Legacy with a corset card. Um, now, Captain of the Watch, sometimes you do hard cast it because you have enough Bally Rush Bannerets on play or enough Daru War Chiefs. Mm -hmm. But the really special thing is when you get to combine them with this card right here, Preeminent Captain. Now, Preeminent Captain, when he attacks, you get to put a soldier card from your hand tapped and attacking into play. So this is 9 out of 10 times how I'm casting Captain of the Watch. All right. It's almost never hard cast from my hand. Um... And with some special help from cards like Ancient Tomb. Oh yeah, down to and, skipping ahead. Yeah, <laughs> skipping out. Well, it's uh. it's kind of the best thing you can do in the deck is if you have a Ancient Tomb and a Chrome Mox in your hand, mm -hmm. you can play a turn one preeminent captain, swing in on turn two, put Captain of the Watch into play, tapped and attacking. Now that's something a lot of legacy decks have a hard time dealing with is five bodies on turn two. Oh yeah, definitely. And you've got some great prison pieces here with Chalice of the Void and Suppression Field. Yeah, well, just to start with Chalice of the Void, that's probably the one everyone's more familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, now, the unique thing about Soldiers is it plays zero one-drops. Yeah, I was noticing that. Even if, even in the board, you've got none. Yes, no, none, yeah. Absolutely. Um, you play against some other tribal decks, uh, namely Merfolk, mm -hmm. and they also chalice for one sometimes, but they don't chalice for one on turn one if they have um, an Aether Vial. They yeah. Begin that play. I don't have that problem. So, with again, with cards like Ancient Tomb and Chrome Mox, you can chalice for one on turn one quite frequently. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, if you play Legacy, you know chalice for one is a huge problem for a lot of decks. Oh, man. Uh, Very problematic. Yeah. Now, another unique thing about this deck is it has no activated abilities, which is pretty uncommon for a lot of decks. Oh, wow, yeah. So that makes Suppression Field even better. Yeah, there's there's never a time where it bites you. It's mm -hmm. always online. You know, they have to pay two to use their fetch lands, two to use their wastelands, which wastelands are pretty bad against you anyways. You are playing nine basic lands here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're... Your uh, Planeswalkers cost two to use. Your, I, I was playing against Miracles before the ban. <laughs> he had uh, four lands out and a fetch land, and I had two suppression fields. So now he's got to pay four to crack his fetch land. 
<laughs> now next turn. That is sick. He wants to play a Jace the Mind Sculptor. I have Thalia out. He has to tap out mm -hmm. five to play Jace. Can't even use his ability because of four suppression field. Oh my gosh. Next turn, he has to pay four mana just to brainstorm. So that was basically took him three turns and 15 mana to brainstorm. Oh my god, that's So you insane. can imagine just how much work this little card does. Suppression field is it's just so good. Yes, yeah, two suppression fields makes a brainstorm cost 15 times as much in certain situations. <laughs> oh god, that's absurd. All right, so what what decks do you uh, do you have stuff in the sideboard for? That's the real question we've got here. Now this is um, anybody who plays something similar to this, because there are very few kindred souls out there who do play something like this. Mm -hmm. All of us have different sideboards. Um, Field Marshal right here. He's a guy that I have a love hate relationship with. <laughs> On the one hand. Plus one, plus one, and first strike to your whole team makes combat damage a nightmare for your opponents. Yeah. Um, it's it's really nice against other tribal decks or other maybe like Eldrazi, something that really lets your guys actually just go hand to hand with a, a lot of these beater decks. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I've uh, I've group blocked uh, Crater Hoof before and killed it. Right. Dang. <laughs> My whole team having first strike, just like no, that's not happening. That's absurd. Um, but he is double white on turn and so he's the only three drop that you can't cast on turn one when you get your combo yeah you've so got he's it. a bit disappointing in that way not that you can only reduce him a little bit yeah right um armageddon here is my one of fun of card um there's almost never a right time to actually play armageddon <laughs> or like not even really a right deck to play it against what not against lands the lands is that's an exception <laughs> i actually got to play it against someone yesterday it was quite devastating for them uh. i also had a rest in peace before i did it <laughs> <laughs> oh um, that's great but there are certain decks i know like um that muddle around a bit and because you do play chrome moxes mm. and you play multiple creatures that make your guys cheaper you can bounce back from it pretty quick. If you have a preeminent captain, yeah. you don't even need lands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Everything's every creature in the deck is a soldier. <clears throat> yeah, warship uh, is mm -hmm. another card for um, certain decks. Like it can work against uh, any decks that use abrupt decays mm -hmm. to get rid of non-creature permanents. Can't target warship. That causes a problem for them. You no, know, like to use it against things like Eldrazi again to bring mm -hmm. that up. Uh, it's kind of a case by case basis, but yeah, basically this is like um, this is an anti abrupt K deck card. Uh, rest in peace. You don't really need to explain why you want yeah, rest, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace is pretty easy. It's pretty self explanatory. Frexian Revokers, Revokers again. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly Liliana. That's what I'm thinking about. But oh. lots of funky decks do have all these crazy cards, and it's a nice little you know silver bullet. Again, Oblivion Ring, classic catch all. Yeah. Uh, anything that I can't take care of. For some reason or another, Oblivion Ring helps out. Um, besides that, I think the only cards we didn't mention in the main were Cavern of Souls, which is pretty self-explanatory. Every mm -hmm. creature is a soldier, except for Phyrexian Ring. Except for Phyrexian Ring, <laughs> true, true. I, I, I got ahead of myself there. I changed yeah. the sideboard. But on the plus side, you can cast them with HN2 on turn one. So. Exactly. Uh, and two Caracas. You are playing eight legendaries. And yeah. You got eight Thalias, why not? Yeah, and it helps you deal with decks that you have a very hard problem with, like uh, Reanimator. Oh, yeah. Um, in fact, people might notice that I'm not playing for Cavern of Souls. The only reason is it, it can mess up your suppression fields, and it really doesn't work with a lot of your sideboard cards. Yeah. And it's not like you can side out a land, so that's you the can, way it sits right now. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the way it sits right now. It might change okay. um, in the future. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about Palace Jailer. That's the most interesting Oh, yeah, part. Palace Jailer, obviously. <laughs> now, if you don't know what Palace Jailer does, I don't blame you. This is a card that when it comes into play, you become the monarch, mm -hmm. and you exile a creature. Now, they don't get the creature back when they kill Palace Jailer, which is a mistake that all of my opponents are making this week. Um, they get, get it, back it back when they become monarch? When they become the monarch. And you know the legacy, there's a lot of decks that don't play any creatures, or maybe just a snapcaster, a bob. Creatures that can't really attack into me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. and a lot, a lot of the time you play this, and you says you're drawing two cards for the rest of the game, and that's how it sits. Which is fantastic, especially in white. That's yes, one of the hardest things is keeping it going. In fact, yeah. sometimes I think about putting a couple more on my sideboard. 
is a it's a pretty, solid uh, catch-all, yeah. Pretty high price point, but uh, the only other thing I'd probably want to show off is oh yeah, I uh, I got different sets of tokens full arted here, one for uh, nice. each uh, captain of the watch. Very nice. And that's about it. That's my deck. Yeah, wow. So what would you say is the best matchup for this deck? My best matchup post or pre-top man was Miracles. <laughs> Nine out of ten games, easy. In fact, multiple games where they never resolve one spell mm -hmm. with a combination of Chalice and Suppression Field for their fetches. Yeah. Nowadays, I like to face Delver variants. That's an incredibly good matchup. Uh, other decks that play a lot of one-drop spells. Decks that... Um, you know, combo decks are hard for me to beat. You basically hope that you you draw the disruption. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't, you know, you, you're kind of hooped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there are a lot of decks that have trouble with a combo and legacy. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is one of them. Um, it's, got, it's, a, it's very fun. Very fun to play against other tribal decks, uh, mm -hmm. especially which is a tribal deck, but Death and Taxes is probably one of the most interactive matchups for this deck. Yeah, they keep trying to make you pay more and you just keep paying less. <laughs> yeah, but you also get to actually do combat math, which is something that really doesn't happen a lot of the time in uh, Legacy. Yeah, okay. It feels a lot more like modern or standard where you're bouncing all these weird creatures into each other. You know, the monarch tree, it's back and forth, other stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, well, I think that about uh, wraps everything up for this episode. Yeah. Is there anything you'd, uh, you'd like to plug before we uh, head out? Uh, yeah, my local store, House of Cards, uh, House of Cards Abbotsford. It's got a website. You... Oh, Abbotsford. I've been there. Well, yeah. not, to the, not to the store, but to Abbotsford. Yeah, I live, I live in Canada. <laughs> I'm just coming down to PAX for the weekend to have some fun before school starts again. Nice. Well, yeah, but, uh, House of Cards in Abbotsford. That sounds like a great place. Yeah, if you love soldiers, if you love <laughs> Mono White, if you love playing you know derpy corset creatures while your legacy play opponent you know can't play a single card with their three thousand dollar deck i would suggest looking into soldiers yeah i mean yeah that looks like a great deck and this deck is actually pretty affordable if you don't foil it out like i did <laughs> well thanks for being on yeah thanks for having me man great talking to you